Hey guys, Levelcap here, and today I want to consolidate and go over everything that's been data mined from the Battlefield 2042 technical playtest files. Data mines can potentially tell us a lot about upcoming features and additions to a game, and there's especially a lot of info about Hazard Zone that allows us to paint a much more complete picture of what you can expect from that highly anticipated mode. Now, of course, all of the data mined info we're covering today comes from the recent 2042 playtest and was found by the Battlefield data miner Temporial. He's been a reliable source of data mined info over the course of Battlefield 5's life cycle, though many of his findings were unfinished assets that DICE never officially released in the game. So with that in mind, just because we're getting a lot of data mined info here, doesn't mean that all of it is necessarily going to end up in the game. So now that you're more aware of the nature of a data mine and what that info actually means, let's actually talk about the most interesting data that Temporial found that relates to Hazard Zone. Hazard Zone is the squad-based, high-stakes, supposedly not a battle royale mode that DICE have been pretty much radio silent on since the 2042 reveal. DICE has hinted at it being a modern interpretation of the battle royale experience, but they really haven't given us much more than that, officially. According to Temporial's findings, though, Hazard Zone bears a resemblance to games like Escape from Tarkov and Hunt Showdown. The basic premise is that you and your squad mates are dropped into a Hazard Zone version of 2042's standard maps. Temporial has confirmed Orbital and Discarded are two of the compatible maps. Plus, the Exodus short film also alludes to the Hourglass map set in Doha, Qatar as a Hazard Zone location. And the goal of this this mode is to secure intel from crash satellites on the map. AI soldiers and presumably other players and squads will serve as hostile resistance and side objectives. Some of the AI enemies will be mini bosses that players can kill for bonuses and rewards. AI soldiers may be able to call in reinforcements, parachute around the map, and operate vehicles, including the Jaguar EBRC and the HDT Storm. Now, to help you survive a match, Hazard Zone will offer you a variety of tactical upgrades that include spotting duration, starting armor, loadout insurance, satellite info, deploy speed, extra respawn beacon, extra intel storage, throwable ammo, faster healing, ammo increase, bonus AI rewards, and bonus intel rewards. Now, within this mode, it's tough to say what role specialists will play. Some of these tactical upgrades do tend to overlap with this specialist loadout options like ammo crates, so there's a chance that these specialists will be either modified for this mode or they'll just be standard soldiers that don't have any special abilities. Now once you've collected your intel or decide to leave a match, you can head to an extraction site to call an exfil helicopter. You'll likely have to defend yourself while you wait. If you miss your ride, you'll need to go to another extraction site and do the process again. Successfully extracting builds your extraction streak bonus. This bonus can potentially give you more XP per match, discounts on purchasable equipment, and more money to spend on tactical upgrades. Your streak also unlocks progressively higher tiers of tactical upgrades and equipment the deeper it goes. Now speaking of progression when it applies to the base game of 2042, Temporial says that progression will have multiple elements. There will be player ranks with an unknown level cap, mastery ranks for individual specialists, weapons, gadgets, vehicles, and veterancy badges for game modes and squad play. Ribbons are also returning for kills, revives, spotting, and other gameplay actions, and a lot of this stuff seems very familiar and on par with previous Battlefield games. Based on the data mines, 2042 could potentially bring back some elements of Battlefield 5 system like weapon masteries to unlock special camos or attachments. Hopefully DICE will design their assignment system a bit better this time around. Now it also sounds like the Tides of War weekly challenge system may be coming back. The 2042 Battle Pass offers weekly missions that have a certain Battle Pass value attribute. Completing weekly challenges will level up your Battle Pass to unlock new tiers and content. Now the original Tides of War missions were quite convoluted, especially for the first six months or so of Battlefield 5's life cycle. Hopefully 2042's missions are a bit more straightforward. Temporial also found files that reference the game's first season of post-launch content. The only thing of substance he was really able to glean from these files is that a new map codenamed Ridge is being added with the season. 
Now, of course, it wouldn't be a Tempriel data mine video without a big list of weapons. He found nearly 30 guns in total, though some of them we've already ID'd from trailers and gameplay footage. But in case you want a refresher on what's been found, here we go. For SMGs, Tempriel found the PP-19 Bison, the MP-9 Chris Vector, and SMG-49. For assault rifles, there's the AK-12, SCAR Mark 17, and MCX Spear. DMRs may include the Keltec CMR-30, Shokovin SVCH, if that's how you say it, and the Daniel Defense M4. For LMGs, there's the MGA Saw K, PKP Peshenag, and the KAC LWAMG. Shotguns include the Cry 612, Sega 12, and Remington 870 MCS. Bolt action rifles include the TTS X Seed, NTW 20, DSR 1, and TRG M10. Temporial also found two special weapons a lever action rifle called the Marlin 4570, and a Cobra R9 crossbow. As for sidearms, Tempriel found a Flux Defense MP17, Sig Sauer M17, M45A1, Taurus 44, and Glock 17 as handgun options. Melee weapons include the ACB90 Classic Knife, Battlefield 1 Hatchet, Dice Dev Knife, Santa Muerte Cane Sword, Skeletonized Knife, Survival Knife, Tactical Folding Knife, and Wakizashi, which is actually a Feudal Japan era sword that was typically one to two feet in length. Battle pickup weapons might also be returning. The M134A2 Vulcan minigun was found, the M32A1 Milcor MGL, aka Multi Grenade Launcher, and the Barrett XM109 sniper rifle were buried in the files and seem to spawn at specific locations on the maps. Again, a lot of these weapons have been spotted in the trailers and most of the names will probably be different at launch. And of course, there's also a chance that they'll never see the light of day. Again, we have to remember that Temporial has found dozens of guns in Battlefield 5's files that DICE never officially released. As for weapon attachments, Temporial found the M5A3 assault rifle has three barrels, short, medium, and long, three muzzle barrels, brakes or compensators, three suppressors, four grips, four ammo or magazine variants, 13 scopes, and a variety of potential weapon specific attachments like bipod, laser sight, weapon light, and grenade launcher. Some of the ammo type options are subsonic, incendiary, explosive, armor piercing, ranged, buckshot, which comes with short, middle, and long, slug, and flechette. There's also going to be light, medium, and heavy magazines that offer different ammo capacities. And of course, not all weapons will have access to all the ammo options. Tempriel specifically highlighted the Chris Vector getting subsonic ammo and the M44 handgun offering explosive rounds. It also seems like the max scope magnification available during the playtest was 10x. In addition to Tempriel also finding weapon customization options like the LWAMG, his infographic shows some unique options like an underbell shotgun and grenade launcher. Now how you utilize these weapons is going to be connected with your chosen specialist, and on top of the five specialists that have already been officially revealed, Temporiel has found another five. Again, most of these have appeared in marketing for the game, but DICE hasn't explicitly revealed them yet. They include the wingsuit specialist Sundance, Espinoza with a ballistic shield and explosive damage resistance, Jisoo Pike has an augmented reality scanner, Constantine and Hell has a passive that involves reviving and armor, and a supply gadget that gives out armor and ammo. And finally, there's Navin Rao, whose passive is called Trojan Network, and his gadget is a signal hacker that hacks enemy soldiers and vehicles. Now, the last big chunk of info that Temporiel has released so far concerns vehicles. 2042 will offer a pretty wide variety of land and air options. For tanks, there's the American M1A5 and Russian T28. Both tanks will have a variety of loadout options. Their primary weapons include a 120mm smoothbore, close-ranged barrel, and long-ranged barrel. Secondary options are an LMG and HMG. For abilities, there's a smoke launcher, smoke discharger, thermal smoke, and system repair. 
Gunner Seat 1 offers a 40 millimeter grenade launcher, bounce grenades, EMP, mortar, rockets, and shotgun. Gunner Seat 2 has a guided missile, HMG, and minigun. And finally, passengers can spot or have a spotting pulse. Jets and helicopters get a similar complement of weapon options. The American and Russian jets found in the files offer a 20mm or 30mm primary minigun. Their secondaries include air-to-air -air missiles, air-to-ground missiles, and homing missiles. They also have an ability slot with a detection jammer, flares, or system repair option. The attack helicopters have an auto cannon, light or heavy rockets, and homing rockets as their primary. Their secondaries are a tow missile, air-to-ground missiles, and lock-on homing missiles. They also have the same three abilities as jets and additional gunner seat with a 30mm cannon. Some other vehicle details include the MC5 Bolt, which is the Ripsaw tank. It has a default, cluster, and incendiary mine layer weapon. It also has the smoke and repair options the other tanks have. The Ripsaw's top gunner can use either a 30mm cannon, guided missile, or minigun. Now again, according to the files, there's two amphibious vehicles in the game, a Christie 6 6183 hovercraft and the FNSS Zaha Mav. The driver seats only offer countermeasures and the gunner gets 40 millimeter grenades, a guided missile, or a minigun. Additional seats offer standard LMGs and there's also the typical ribs and jet skis from previous Battlefield games. The Jaguar EBRC that you'll see in Hazard Zone also appears in the standard multiplayer files. It's positioned more as an anti-air tank and features an AA double cannon, AA missile, and other anti-air weapons. Tempuriel also found a reference to the Panhard Crab 4x4 armored combat vehicle, but there's no more info available about it from the trailers or data mining. Now, outside of vehicles, Tempuriel also found multiple new damage types like cold, electricity, storm, toxic, and radiation that might have something to do with 2042's weather events or play key roles in Hazard Zone. And he found a possible destruction event on the Kaleidoscope map that involves one of the radio towers on a skyscraper falling. And finally, the list of supported game modes on the orbital map for the All Out Warfare option includes Conquest Standard and Conquest Small, and Breakthrough Standard and Breakthrough Small. Portal, of course, will offer all of Portal's custom game modes and options, and Hazard Zone will have a Standard and Small Size option as well. Now obviously there's a ton of data here to chew through, likely not all of it will make it to the final game, but I think it gives us a good picture of what to expect from the Hazard Zone game mode and just some ideas about what weapons, vehicles, and modification is going to be like in the standard mode. I'm certainly getting excited for Hazard Zone especially, it sounds like DICE is putting a lot more work into this mode and that it's going to be a much bigger feature of the game. There's still a lot of big question marks up in the air like is it going to be free? to play? How is progression going to work in the long run? Is it going to appeal to Battle Royale players? Or is it going to appeal more to Escape from Tarkov players? But I'm excited to learn more. It's fun digging into all of this information that Temporiel has provided and sort of theory crafting what the game could be like. A big thank you to Temporiel for doing all of this work. And thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about all this info, what modes and operators and weapons and stuff are you looking forward to the most? I'll see you guys next time. This is Level Cap signing off.